band together. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, right. it's always good stuff happens when you do that. You know, we're all blessed to get to do what we do when we want to do it. And, um, you know, there's no better way to, to honor that than by giving back to, to others. The American Tragedy, a rock and roll band started in 2000 right here in Shreveport. They were planning a reunion concert. Trey was having to come to town and uh, he said, man, why don't we do a reunion show with Jason and, um, and make it a 100% fundraiser. Trey says, uh, I want to do a show with the lot. I want to do it all ages. I want to have it be for a benefit. I want to do it at the end of this month. Okay. There's a lot of details I need. What's the lot? It's a lot. Okay. All right. How many, how many people does it hold? Look it up on Facebook. <laughs> so anyway, I looked it up on Facebook. That's a big joint. So he sold you on it. Oh yeah, like, well he didn't sell me, he told me what I was gonna do. And I said, yes sir. I reached out to the band to get the details and they said, yeah, it is a reunion show as well as a benefit show. The money going towards those affected by Hurricane Ida. At first I was like, well, let's give it to the arts in Shreveport or something like that. But he's like, uh, arts have plenty of money here in Shreveport. I was like, well, you wouldn't know. So, Hurricane Ida. It was pretty uh, recent that Hurricane Ida had come through and just, you know, destroyed Southeast Louisiana. And they weren't getting, and they still are not getting the press that Katrina received or, I mean, just, just anything. Um, the devastation down there in Lafouche Parish, I mean, I don't know how those people are ever going to, to rebuild their lives. I live in Gonzales. We had, we had some, we had some damage, but it was nothing like what the people in Lafouche Parish and some other areas down there. I mean, they got they got jacked up. Their area was destroyed. It was flooded, houses torn apart. I mean, it's awful. It's awful. This Hurricane Ida benefit show slash reunion concert was about a week away in the band. They needed to practice. So they all met up at Jackie Brock's place out in the country. I like Jackie's house out here too, right? Isn't that nice? He called a bass a while ago. What is that? Huh. Are, you, are we still fishing over there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted to be, let me uh, pull a trailer out here. You know? <laughs> He's got room. He's got plenty of room. Right? We can start writing again. But it's fantastic to get us all back in the room together for the first time. And, you know, I hadn't hit a note with Jason since 2009. So there's a little bit of anxiety and nerves about how is this is going to go. The benefit concert was held at the lot in downtown Shreveport. A former bus station turned into a unique venue where really cool things happen. Playing at the lot, former bus station, that's pretty cool. I dropped a friend off there one time at the Greyhound. Yeah, so I kind of know where it is. The American Tragedy with Shayla. So that's what we're going to do? More rock and roll. No, I like it. Yeah. I'm telling you, everyone on social media was like, oh, I'm going to that, and everyone did. Local band Shalef, they got things started right. These boys can rock and roll. Yeah, believe that. Led by lead singer Shay Bailiff, owner of Priority Roofing. More on Shay and Priority Roofing coming up in a minute. But these are the shows that you really, they're, they're highlights of, of your career in a way, you know. So, man, we were thrilled. Like I said, we could, we, how can we turn a gig like this down? No way. Shalef rocked the stage for about an hour. Then, 
came the American tragedy. Concert raised money, the reunion concert rocked. Win win, baby. There are people that we've seen here tonight that we've watched grow up that brought their kids here tonight. The vocabulary that I would have to acquire to be able to put into perspective what it's like for so many people to want to drive to come see myself with three of my best friends play music that we're proud of is one definitely one of the best feelings in the world. The band wanted all the money to go directly towards the people affected down south by Hurricane Ida. So they took it down there themselves. Our intention is to go down there and find the most dilapidated buildings in the most forgot about parts of town and just show those people that, that they're loved. It was a few days after the concert, Jackie Brock heard about a woman down in Cutoff, Louisiana that was truly about to be cut off from her home. She lost her roof in the hurricane and was in danger of being put into a nursing home. This is where the story gets really awesome. Jackie then said, Nah, son, reaches out to Shea Bailiff, lead singer of Shea Lip and also owner of Priority Roofing. Next thing you know, big things are happening. Shea and his crew head down. They were able to put a roof on this woman's home at cost. You heard me right at cost. The rest of the money, they used to purchase Visa gift cards and then went and handed to residents around the town. There's 50 yeah. more, y'all yeah. uh, take, yeah, take care of somebody I else. Guess, I got a, a gift card I wanted to give you guys, not much. It was truly one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed. Crazy world we live in today. You know, there's good people still. Hey, <laughs> comes for good. Good You're right. You're right. That's right. Yeah. This lady now has a new roof because these bands decided to raise money for people they have never met before. That's right. I just, like I said, it's a blessing. Well, it was kind of a miracle how fast these things are getting done. You know? I know. It, I know. It's like, boom, they drive up and it's like they're on the roof and everything's starting and it's awesome. It went from me and uh, thinking that I was going to have myself and somebody else that doesn't know how to do roofs yeah. and, and two guys that, that, that do roof <laughs> and maybe one other hand. That knows how. That before we knew how big your house was. Yeah. To knock out in like one one day, they're like, oh my God, that's gonna take like four people several, several days. Right. You know, yeah. and then uh, and Shay's like, no, I've got a crew that we can get down there, and then that crew multiplied by three more people awesome. last yeah. night. So I mean, you're gonna be dry today. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> We love it. We love it. It's He's awesome. The of the <laughs> yeah, she, she's got us well fed. You know, uh oh, sure. hey, look. We're doing good. That's yeah. just a snack right here. And oh, the gumbo's yeah. getting ready to get started. Second course already. Second course. <laughs> yeah. While down in Lafluche Paris, the devastation was everywhere. Everywhere you looked. It could be seen from the highway. It could be felt in the neighborhoods. Places like South Lafluche High School whose alumni include Ed Ogeron and Bobby Hebert, receiving major restoration, trying to get back to normal.
people have done it. And appreciate y'all coming down to help those people. You helped design the, the levee system that uh, protected yeah, this I've area? I've been doing that for 41 years, yeah. And we haven't flooded since 1985 before we helped to close the system. Everybody around us, north, south, east, and west has flooded, and we haven't flooded since 85. Yeah. Good job. So, uh, yeah, good job. Well, good and lucky. It takes both, you know. Sometimes I say it's better to be lucky than good. But this time we weren't lucky. We got the worst of this storm, and we were lucky that we didn't suffer some serious flooding. Had we suffered serious flooding? Look, nobody died. As terrible as the wind was, as many houses I saw just flattened, nobody died. But if that storm surge had gotten in, you would have seen five, six, seven feet of water in houses. There's no doubt that we would have lost a lot of people. So that's, that's really a super silver lining that nobody died in the storm in our area. That is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the devastation that we've seen just driving in here, it's hard to imagine that, that yeah, everybody yeah, made it through there. Yeah, it really, most, uh, like I said, those people should have left and they did. I mean, we, people are getting too confident about our, our system working, and they should. Uh, you know, when you get a powerful storm, uh, we weren't even designed for a, a storm of, of, of this magnitude. You know, we're like a strong two, week three, and uh, this was a solid four or almost a five. And we didn't flood. That was, I mean, that was really, really good. Yeah. So the water did come. Oh, we had. It, I got 17-foot levees, and the water came up 16 feet up. We did have overtopping in some places. It did pond a little bit in the sugarcane field, but no house flooded, no business flooded. I mean, and nobody died. Man. That's yeah. Cool. And I said yeah. We, we feel, we feel really, really good about that. You know, some people say, "How does that come?" But I said, "No, we leave. We leave. They did." A better job than we could expect. Man, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, that's sir. Just, that's, that's really the story of the storm. Yeah. Is that nobody died or we get the flood water Yeah, that's, uh, that, that was a big, big deal. That's got to be like a crowning achievement of, of your life's work, right there, being able to say that. That and singing Jambalaya with Fats Domino. <laughs> oh, you got to do that? <laughs> yes, yeah. that. about eight years ago. A friend of mine, this woman, wanted to see some marsh, and I showed her the marsh because she was an artist. And uh, we started talking music. She's a bass player, you know. And oh, yeah. uh, I talked about when I was a kid, uh, my uncle had a friend who was a carpenter, and he was working at Fats Domino's house. And he had a little piece of formica from the house. And, uh, and he brought it to me, and I lost it. He said, well, you want to meet Fats? I said, yes. And got to go to his house uh, for a couple hours. We drank, uh, ate some chicken and drank some more Duel's beer and uh, broke into a little couple of lines on a jambalaya with Pat Domino. Oh, man. That was, like, fantastic. It was unbelievable. unbelievable. That's fantastic. And a great guy, man. Everything you ever heard about that guy, you know, uh, it was just, just fantastic. What most people just don't even know about what happened down here, you know, because you didn't get the media coverage. Yeah, well, you know, you don't have a big population, you know, it's like, uh, you know that, that happens. Then. But uh, bottom line is, in fact, when Katrina hit, we made sure to take care of St. Bernard Parish because we knew everybody knew about New Orleans. We also went to Mississippi because we knew everybody would pay, pay attention to New Orleans. In fact, for Katrina, you know, New Orleans got the backside of the storm. Way over the Mississippi to the east is where you, the, the, the hardest hit, 28 foot storm surge. I mean, just unbelievable. So you go and I, I, mean, I appreciate you coming down and, and again, uh, when, when you don't get as much attention. Uh, oh man. It makes more of a difference when uh, people go and try to help. You know? Well, so the, the needs of people that are down here right now that are that are not men, you know, that was kind of what we were trying to do, was trying to find people that that were ignored, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, that didn't have the means to to take care of their own houses. And, you know, we were talking about a lady that was a roof away from possibly being, like, in a nursing home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. so that, that's what we were hoping to accomplish. Well, that's great. That, and that's really know, the sad part about when the tension's out here. They put on a show in Rock Shreveport, then rolled down to South Louisiana and put on a roof. At cost, we were able to do one roof, which at the time also kind of uh, depressed me because I felt like if we, if we only did something for one person, that we weren't really achieving what I was hoping to achieve with this whole thing. Yeah. You know, off of off you can do what you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes if it's just giving a dollar, that's what you can do. It's better than not giving a dollar. Now, the, act, the actual act of trying to do something, 
you know, things work out, things get better. You multiply just that that many yeah. people. You know, it's the way it's, it's the way all these uh, these uh, mass media, you know, Facebook and everything. Mm -hmm. They charge you a few cents. But you got a billion people doing it, you know, and same That's thing, right. a few cents of everybody doing the right thing. You know, it, 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 it just, it just yeah. it's always effort and it pays off. Well, that gentleman, Put, Putman, down there, he owns a restoration company that's in town, uh, drying out all the schools and everything. I don't know if you've met Put or not, but he's he's been living down here now for, I think, about two months. And um, he is a really dear friend, but he's a fan of the band as well, you know. So, like, one of our last tours, we went out in his motor coach and around the country and stuff. And so he knew what we were involved with down here. And uh, and then my church at home has been really involved down here as well. So he's like, man, what are y'all planning on doing down there? You know, um, and so I was telling him everything that I just told you. And I was like, man, but it looks like we're, I mean, we're gonna be lucky to be able to like do one roof for somebody. And uh, but it's like, that's all you're supposed to do. You do what you can do. I'm, I'm serious. And, uh, you know, you know, look, and, if, if, if I have success, determines whether you try to do something or not that's not a good thing you go try something you know what once in a while you hit a home run you know that's and right. all the other times so you got the first and that ain't bad you know I'll you helped you, another they're, person they're happy know? in there right exactly no, I mean, I, you know, dude they're excited Put, get over in here man you're part of the story oh yeah he is so Put was the reason. How you doing? Put, Put, man. Wendell Carroll, how you nice doing? Nice to meet you. He's the reason why. How your parents didn't even put? They did. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, so it didn't stick with my dad. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, wait, what'd you do so then? Stuck with what? Me. Michael Denzel <laughs> Putman Jr. Put, Put, Putman? That's, That's it. it. <laughs> what? Boy, he's getting with it, man. Bro. Hey, I called Robert yesterday. He said, man, can you, can you get a crew down there by tomorrow? He said, let me, let me, I'll call you right back. Call me five minutes later, and he's like, I can send six, six guys right down there right now. And he calls me last night and said it'll be nine, seven to nine. I think it's got seven. Oh, that's great. Put convinced me that that because I was down here. that Sharon was yeah. was the was the person. Oh, yeah, good. We but I'm telling you, she she treated my mom pretty good at all times, and you know, his EMT is always helping people. Yeah, great. yeah. So man, he's a good person. He's a really good person. They're so sweet. it worked out great. That was somebody who really deserved. And get some help. This came from, so I, I'm a promoter in North Louisiana, and I had Lori Morgan playing. Okay, yeah, well, there I go. There's a the connection, yeah. And uh, and so Lori, um, typically on show nights, I'm running around and just entertaining, having some drinks with people and stuff. But on this specific night, we did not have an extra runner available on staff, and it was time to go get Lori from the hotel, and I ended up having to be the guy to go pick her up so i had to borrow a car because my truck was trash that nasty thing right there borrowed somebody's car and uh kai got in with me and we're riding over to pick up Lori. and uh so you know we're just chatting where are you from yeah and he told me cut off and i'm like oh bro you know i'm sorry and uh and, and you know so they kind of got into that and so the really crazy thing is that that Lori morgan show happened on october the 8th and the day that we decided to do this concert at all and um and like the four of us as as this lineup of the band haven't really communicated in years so it was like october the sixth or seventh like the day before the day before that is when we decided to do this event and make it a, a benefit for this parish and so kai's like yeah, that's where I'm from, and I'm like, that's crazy. I'm no, like, no crazy. bro. So I'm not even supposed to be picking up Lori Morgan, you know, tonight. I'm, yeah, and no, then, yeah, I, and then I'm right. riding with you, who lives in Nashville, but has people down here, and uh, and then puts me in touch with Mr. Jerry, and then and then all all this happens, you know. And, but it's all it's it was all like in the marketing world like a rifle shot directly to one but it, specific thing but all, it's always a good thing we say let's get the band together <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, right. it's always good stuff happens when you do that Kylie, how'd it feel up there i'm all rusty and i'm tired and old and i just want like a snack and a nap and a bath i heard you're you're getting a grande and driving home tonight 100 percent i'm getting a grande 
to get two ground days and uh, keep one for later. What was it like seeing that sea of people tonight? Dude, um, I am uh, beyond blown away that anything that I could have touched or had any part of was having some of on somebody else's life. I can hardly hear you over them chanting one more song. Thank you. 